good day everyone welcome to med school drill in today's tutorial video we will be treating 40 important multiple choice question on the innervation of the upper limb muscles so do your best to stay with me to the end of this 40 mcq questions let us begin Number one, what is the innervation of the infraspinatus muscle? A. Dosa scapular nerve. B. Median nerve. C. Posterior interserous nerve. D. Suprascapular nerve. So, what is the correct answer? Which nerve? will innervate the infraspinatus muscle. The right answer to this question is D, suprascapular nerve. So this is the infraspinatus muscle. It is found on the posterior or at the posterior region of the scapula, right below the spine of the scapula. This is the spine of the scapula, so this is the infraspinatus muscle. So that is it. It is found at the posterior region of the scapula number two damage of dash nerve causes dropping of the wrist a median nerve b radial nerve c ulnar nerve d upper subscapular nerve which of this nerve will cause dropping of the wrist the right answer to this question is b the radial nerve Yeah, this is how a wrist drop looks like in this uh, medical condition the person is unable to extend his hand or should I say his wrist why because as you know the radial nerve the radial nerve is the nerve which is in control or supplies the extensors of the four um, number three, opening policies receives its innervation from which nerve? A. Lower subscapular nerve. B. Suprascapular nerve. C. Median nerve. D. Accessory nerve. So which of this nerve will innervate the opening policies? Okay. The right answer to this question is C. It is a median nerve that will do that. Yeah, so this this shows the this shows the openness policies. So when, whenever you whenever you hear the term policies, it has to do with a muscle or a part of the body that is associated to the thumb, to your big thumb, to the thumb that that is to your first finger, your first digit. Our next question goes like this number four the radial nerve supply which of the following a biceps b triceps c brachialis d theris minor which of the following is supplied by the radial nerve the right answer to this question actually in this question we have two answers the best answer here is b if you see it in your exam paper, the best answer here is B. But another answer is also possible, and that is the brachialis. The brachialis muscle also receives a partial innervation from the radial nerve. So this is the tricep muscle. It's found at the posterior region of the arm. Number five. The palmaris brevis is a short muscle which is located on the palm. Which nerve supplies it? A. Medial nerve. B. Ulnar nerve. C. Radial nerve. D. Posterior cortinous nerve of arm. So, which of these following nerves will supply the palmaris brevis? The right answer to this question is B the ulnar nerve 
So this is the primary brevis, a very small muscle, a very small muscle at uh, found at the fifth digit. That's the primary brevis, a very short muscle. When when you see just like the muscle's name comes out, primary brevis, primary means that it is located at the thumb, sorry, located at the region of the palm, and brevis means it's short. So the the term brevis means short. What am I saying? This uh, this is brief brief over here, over here. This over here. That's the brief sorry. Over here, that's brief So the term brief means short. So next question. What is the root value of the radial nerve? A. C five to T two. B. C five to C six. C c4 to c5 d c5 to t1 what's the root value mind you the c means cervical while the t means thoracic they are nerves or root nerves i'll put them like that so the, the right answer to this question is d c5 to t1 now how do you get that answer now now you have to learn a topic in the in Ghost anatomy called the brachial plexus, which I will still make a a video on. So if you look right here, right here you see this C five, C six, C seven, C eight, and C one. Those are roots of the brachial plexus. Now, if you look right here, somewhere here, here, yes, you see that is where the radial nerve is. You see. The musculocutaneous nerve here, the axillary, then the radial nerve. So, if you study the brachial plexus perfectly, then you will to get the answer for that question. Number seven, dash nerve is most susceptible to injury at the elbow and the wrist. A, subclavius nerve. B, median nerve. C Axillary nerve, D ulnar nerve. What they are asking here is which of this nerve is highly prone to injury at the elbow and at the wrist. The right answer is no other nerve but D, the ulnar nerve. Now this is the ulnar nerve. See nerves are nerves. If you if you take a look at uh, a cadaver, a clean cadaver to be precise, the nerve is has a light color, more like a yellow or like a lemon color, a light color. So, if you look here, you see that there's a nerve passing through here. You see that yellow color. That is the ulnar nerve. Now it goes, it goes under, so it goes behind the um, medial epicondyle goes behind the medial epicondyle so uh a trauma on the medial epicondyle can easily cause damage to the ulnar nerve yeah to the next question now number eight the wasting away of the rhomboid muscle is likely due to the damage of dash nerve a dosa scapula nerve b media pectoral nerve c toracodosa nerve d ulnar nerve so what they're asking here why you think of the question why you think of the answer what they're asking here is um which muscle when it loses its innervation will start to die away that this term this term here wasting away means that the muscle starts to die away it's more like uh, a term called atrophy the muscle the muscle mass starts to reduce so the right answer to this question is a the dosa scapula nerve why because it's the nerve that supplies the rhomboid muscle this is the rhomboid muscle there are two of them you have the rhomboid minor the smaller one the the smaller superior one and the rhomboid major the larger inferior one number nine which of the following muscles does not Sorry, which of the following muscle does the axillary nerve innervate? A. Tevis minor. B. Tevis major. 
de pectoralis major de trapezius. Which of the following muscle does the axillary nerve innervate? So the right answer to this question is A. Teres minor. Yeah, so this is the Teres minor. Just give a diagram. This is Teres minor. Um, okay. This is Teres minor. So somewhere below the Teres minor, around here, the uh, Teres major originates. It goes under the Teres minor and attaches to the humerus on the anterior side. I know my diagram wasn't so good, but get the point. So, uh, the this is the Teres minor. The Teres major originates from the inferior angle of the scapula. It goes behind the Teres minor and attaches or inserts at the posterior region of the anterior head of the humerus. But then, which branch of the medial nerve supplies the deep muscles of the anterior forearm? A. Anterior interosseous nerve. B. Palmar nerve. C. Recurrent branch. D. Palmar digital branch. Which branch of the medial nerve supplies the deep muscles of the anterior forearm? So the right answer to this question is A. The anterior interosseous nerve, A I N. You can call it the A I N. Yeah, in some texts they call them the they call them the A I A I N. So the branches of the medial nerve, you have the muscular branches, the anterior interosseous nerve, the articular branches, the cutaneous nerve of the palm, the common palmar digital nerve, and the recurrent branches. Yeah, okay, these are the muscles of the anterior forearm, the flexus digitorum uh, profundus, the uh, pronator quadratus, the flexor pollicis languinal. This this uh, nerve, this uh, muscle, sorry, are the ones that have been supplied by the anterior interosseous nerve from the media nerve. Number 11, in a post-fixed plexus, as in a post-fixed brachial plexus, the contribution of C4 is large. And in that form, two is often absent. True or false? So this is a true or false question. It's actually we, we have uh, some variations in the brachial plexus. We have the the postfix and the prefix. So do your research on that. So the right answer to this question is false. In a postfix, a postfix will not start. From C4. In fact, it doesn't even have C4. C4 is absent. In the postfix, it will start from C6. Number 12. The brachial plexus is made up of only three trunks upper trunk, middle trunk, and lower trunk. True or false? True. So, this is the brachial plexus. As you can see here, it has, uh, you see, the superior trunk the trunk and the inferior trunk so he has two trunk so in this place it was called upper trunk and here it was called superior so it's the same thing middle trunk the trunk lower trunk inferior so we hear the word superior up inferior downwards so moving on but 13 flat muscle is due to the lesion of the musculocutaneous nerve true or false flat muscle sorry flat shoulder is due to the lesion of the musculocutaneous nerve true or false the answer is false why because the shoulder the flat shoulder which what i referring to is the deltoid muscle is inherited by the axillary nerve and not the musculocutaneous nerve number 14 transverse fracture of the mid humeral shaft leads to wrist drop true or false so what do you think is the answer what do you think is the answer so the right answer here is true why because what causes wrist drop wrist drop is caused when there's a damage of the radial nerve now if you look at the anatomy 
or the yes the osteology of the humerus bone you will notice that at the mid shaft of the humerus bone there is a radial groove and this radial groove allows the radial nerve to pass through so if there is a transverse fraction it will definitely lead to a lesion or a damage or a compression of the radial nerve and in, and in all cases it will definitely need lead to a wrist drop yes so this is how a transverse uh, um, fracture of the humerus looks like so you can see from this uh, from this case this is the, this is the humerus bone but at this place the bone was broken trans transversely so and the the radial groove is somewhere around here so definitely the nerve will be leisured but 15 the ulnar nerve arises from the medial cord of the brachial plexus through or force the ulnar nerve arises from the medial cord of the brachial plexus through or force now the right answer here is true is true how is it true let me show you the diagram on the back of the second now the ax now the axis is the honor nerve from the medial cord and the answer is true if you look here you can see the honor nerve this is the honor nerve as you can see it is coming from the medial cord so that is why the answer is correct so moving on number 16 the regimental badge area gets its sensory innervation from the axillary nerve true or false true or false yeah, the right answer here the right answer here is is have you, have you gotten your answer if you've gotten it by now it's a very straightforward question all you have to do is to think of the muscle that are found at the regimental badge area that the right answer here is true the regimental badge area refers to the um the del the deltoid muscle which is supplied by the axillary nerve as earlier stated number 17 the musculocutaneous nerve is a minor branch of the roots of the brachial plexus true or false true or false true or false true or false the right answer is false so the mechanical nerve is not a minor branch from the root of the back of the source. The nerve is a terminal branch. It is a terminal branch is on is on is on a, a a whole new side from the root. The root is far away from where the from where this nerve comes out from. But 18. The brachial plexus has roots arising from C5 to T1 spinal segments true or false true or false the right answer is true to so the back air plexus as I showed you before let me show you one more time as you can see there's a C5 a C6 a C7 a C8 and a T1 so it goes from C5 the T1. So that's what that uh, question was was asking was asking you. Sorry. Yeah. So yeah. So, yeah. So this is the bracket plex. I didn't take back. So this is it. So you can see the C5, the C6, the C7, the C8, and the T1. So moving on. Number 19. The bracket plexus is located above the clavicle. True or false? The bracket plexus is located above the clavicle. True or false? The right answer here is force is found below the clavicle the clavicle in a way protects it somehow number 20 the parts of the brachial plexus are in this order R roots trunk divisions cord and branches that terminal branches true or false yes this is very correct it's very correct it's true if i see the the roots that's from the c5 to the t1 you see the trunk like i showed you before the superior trunk middle trunk and the inferior trunk you see the divisions 
the cord, the media cord, and the rest. I see the branches, the five terminal branches, the microcutaneous nerve, the axillary nerve, the radial nerve, the ulnar nerve. I'm going to the other one, so many one more, okay, and the media nerve here. But 21. Which group of muscles does the medial nerve innervate the majority of? A. Anterior arm. B. Anterior forearm. C. Posterior arm. D. Posterior forearm. So, which of these areas does the majority of the muscles there are being supplied by the medial nerve? So the right answer to this question is first of all let us just try and eliminate now a anterior arm even about four muscles the biceps the brachialis the coracoid uh, brachialis muscle sorry three muscles so and these three muscles are all innervated by the musculocutaneous nerve so a is wrong D posterior forearm is by the radial nerve. The posterior arm is by the radial nerve. The right answer here is the anterior forearm. 122. Which nerve root does not contribute to the medial nerve? Which nerve root does not contribute to the medial nerve? A C four B C seven C C eight D T one. So what's the answer? What do you think is the answer? Give me an answer. So the right answer to this question is A C four. And why is that? First of all, the C four does not participate in the brachial plexus and the Medial nerve originates from the brachial plexus. So that is it. So next question. Number 23. Which muscle rapidly interferes following damage to the axillary nerve? A. The teres major. B. The deltoid muscle. C. The trapezius muscle. D. The stenocleidoid moisture. Which of these muscles will rapidly atrophy following damage to the axillary nerve? So what they are seeing, what they are asking you indirectly is uh, which of these muscles is supplied by the axillary nerve? And the right answer to this question, like I have said, literally is the deltoid muscle. But twenty-four. What deformity occurs if there is damage to the radial nerve in the axilla? Which deformity occurs if there is damage to the radial nerve in the axilla? A. Honor claw. B. Hand of benediction. C. Wrist drop. D. Waiter's tip. So the right answer to this one is C. Wrist drop. Because it's the radial nerve. Number 25. Which area does the ulnar nerve provide cutaneous innervation to? A. Lateral one and a half fingers. B. Medial one and a half fingers. C. Anterior forearm. D. Posterior forearm. When you see the word cutaneous, it has to do with the skin. So what they are seeing is that, uh, uh, which which skin of the finger does the ulnar nerve provide innervation for? And the right answer to this question is the medial one and a half. If you look at the way the media the ulnar nerve moves. It moves from the uh let's, let's see let us start from the elbow now it moves at the medial side of the uh, medial epicondyle it moves straight upwards it innervates the innervates your your pinky 
which is your fifth finger and half and half of the fourth finger. Number 26. Which of the following nerve roots does not contribute to the major nerve? I believe we have answered this before. A, C, 4, B, C, 5, C, 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 D, C, 7, E, C, 8. And the right answer to this question is A, C, 4. Number 27. What forms the inferior border of the quadrangular space? A. Teres minor. B. Tricep brachii. C. Teres major. D. Bicep brachii. And the right answer to this question is C. The teres major. Okay. The Quadrangular space is bordered inferiorly by the suprascapular muscle, in bracket by the teres minor muscle when viewed posteriorly. <laughs> but when viewed uh, um, anteriorly, you will see the subscapularis muscle. So, number two, the inferior border, inferiorly by the teres major muscle, which they asked in our question, D, uh, laterally by the by the surgical neck of the humerus um, before immediately by the long head of the tricep so i think it would be good for you to take a screenshot of this page and save it and so you can go through it later so i'll, I'll give you some seconds to take your screenshots so by now you can have taken your screenshots superiorly this quadrangular space is a very common Anatomy question. You cannot you cannot miss it in your multiple choice question. No matter the department. So next question. Number twenty eight. Which of the following muscles does the medial nerve not innervate? A. Pronator teres. B. Flexor carpi ulnaris. C. Flexor carpi radialis. D. Flexor Digitorium superficialis. So the right answer to this question is B. Flexor carpal urinary. This muscle is being supplied by the ulnar nerve. So take notes of that. Number twenty-nine. Which root is typically damaged? In Klopp's palsy, A, C4, B, C5, C, C5, D, C6, E, T1. So B and C are the same option. That would be an error. So the right answer to this question is what? Is what? Klopp's palsy. You know, whenever you talk about Klopp's palsy, you remember Ip's palsy. They are, they are friends. They come along. But they are two different. They, different, they relate to two different... Uh, Nerve root. So the answer to this question, the nerve root that is damaged here is E, the T1. So this is the Klaus palsy. Is by this C8 and the T1. That's what contributes to the pulse palsy. The C8 and the T1 are the Ips palsy by the C5 and the C6. So in some texts by some scholars. They usually call the apes palsy um something like uh, upper upper trunk neuropathy and the club's palsy as a lower uh trunk neuropathy. Why? Because the apes palsy is affected by the C5 and the C6, which are in the upper which are upper roots, while the C8 and T1 are lower roots. So note that number 30 what is the name of the sensory branch of the musculocutaneous nerve a palmar digital branch b lateral cutaneous branch c posterior terminal branch d posterior cutaneous nerve of forearm 
so which of the which of this is the branch of the musculocutaneous nerve that provides sensory function and the right answer is b the lateral cutaneous branch number 31 which nerve supplies the supinator muscle a accessory nerve b lateral cutaneous nerve of media sorry lateral cutaneous branch of media nerve sorry but c deep branch of the radial nerve d dorsal scapular nerve so which of this nerve will supply the supinator muscle so it is it is this muscle that is in charge of the supination action or supination movement that occurs between your wrist and your elbow joint so the right answer in this question is c the deep branch of the radial nerve so looking at this three muscles are showing in this diagram that i have for you three muscles are showing here this is the anterior anterior parts of the upper limb this is your hand region yes now this muscle here is called the pronator quadratus pronator quadratus this muscle here is called the pronator teres why this muscle over here is called the supinator looks like a supinator but also it, it, it could also be the anconus but it looks like the supinator muscle so you have to be careful with muscles under the upper limb but muscles generally so sometimes do familiar but you have to note that once you can note their anatomical position where they should be located then you are good to go number 32 how many cutaneous branches does the radial nerve give off a1 b2 c3 d4 how many cutaneous nerve does the radial nerve give off the right answer to this question is four. It gives us four cortinous branches. Now, cortinous innervation refers to the area of the skin which is supplied by a specific cortinous nerve. So, cortinous nerve, all they do, it is due to cortinous innervation. That is why you are able to feel touch when someone touches your skin. When a, when a hot substance touches you, when the wind flows through your skin, that is why you're able to feel that sensation because you have cortinous innervation. So, if you are to lose cortinous innervation in a particular area, probably due to um, a trauma such as uh, bones, depending on the degree of the bones, you can lose innervation in that area because the skin in that area would have died because of the heat number three which branch of the medial nerve innervate the tana eminus a the anterior interserous nerve b the palmar cortinous nerve c the recurrent branch d the palmar digital branch which branch of the medial nerve innervates the tunnel eminence so what's the answer on the answer a anterior the cellular nerve b the palmar cortinous nerve c the recurrent branch d the palmar digital branch so the right answer to this question is c the recurrent branch so if you look at your hand the, the those muscles that are found uh under or located around around the uh, palm so around your, your thumb sorry around the thumb they are called the tunnel muscle the tunnel eminence why the one on the opposite side which is the medial side are called the hypo 
Tanau Moses or Hypotanau Eminus. Number 34, which of the following nerve roots does not contribute to the brachial plexus? A, C4, B, C5, C, C7, D, T1. And like I told you before, the brachial plexus runs from C5, C6, C7, C8, and T1. So the odd one out is A, C4 does not belong to the brachial plexus even though it's it supplies a little bit a little bit but it's not really part of the brachial plexus number 35 at what bony landmark of the humerus is the ulnar nerve vulnerable damage a medial epicondyle b lateral epicondyle c greater tobacco d lesser tobacco so which of these bony landmark will you find the honor nerve close to the right answer in this question is a the medial epicondyle so this is the humerus bone you can see some of the bony features. You can see the um, the coronoid fossa, the radial fossa, the lateral epicondyle, the medial epicondyle, the capitulum, and the cochlea down there. At, at this region, this side here, this side is called the medial supraepicondylar ridge. Why here? You see the lateral supra epicondyle bridge. So, at this part here, where you see the medial epicondyle, behind it, behind it, that's where you find the the uh, ulnar nerve just passing through it from behind, like that. Number thirty six. Which muscle does the ulnar nerve pierce in the fore arm? A. Flexor carpa radialis. B. Flexor carpa ulnaris. C. Flexor digitorum superficialis. D. Pronator teres. So, what's the right answer? The right answer to this question is B. Flexor kappa unaris. That last term unaris relates to the owner. So note that why this term radialis relates to the the radial the radial the radius bone. Why the kappa relates to the kappa bones the eight kappa bones of the wrist. So note all these small facts. They really help you in determining your answer. Number. 37. Which of these muscles of the hand is supplied by the medial nerve? A. Lumbricals 3 and 4. B. Lumbricals 1 and 2. C. Adductor pollicis. D. Palmaris brevis. Which of these muscles of the hand is supplied by the medial nerve? Nerve and the right answer to this question is the lumbricals one and two. Number thirty-eight. What deformity occurs at Ibs palsy? A. Honor claw. B. Hand on benediction. C. Waiter's tip. D. Wrist drop what's the answer is pause remember is pops is policy uh relates to the damage from the upper trunk from the c5 and the c6 to be precise so the right answer to this question is 
C waiter's tip now waiter's tip can also be called a uh, policeman tip so note it in case in case they in case they interchange it in your mcq in course or mb number 39 which artery accompanies the axillary nerve when exiting the axilla a brachial artery b anterior circumflex artery c posterior circumflex artery d axillary artery so which artery accompany the axillary nerve when exiting the axilla the right answer to this question is c the posterior circumflex artery how it is called the posterior circumflex hum hum humera artery why because it's it's circum it goes round it forms some kind of uh, a circumference it goes round the head or the head of the humerus bone number 40 which landmark of the humerus marks the course of the radial nerve a greater tubercle b lesser tubercle c intertubicular groove d radial groove i believe i have explained that like before earlier in this same tutorial video so the greater tubercle is not the answer the lesser tubercle is not the answer the intertubicular group not the answer the right answer here is the radial group yeah so this is the humerus bone this is the humerus bone of the of the left upper limb left upper limb. so as you can see at this region here this region here there's some kind of ridge that forms here let me you saw where you saw where I drew the other lines. Let me take out the lines now. Just try and look closely. There's a form of ridge that forms around here. That forms around here. Some kind of ridge that forms around here. So that is where the radial nerve passes. It passes from passes from from there. It passes from from there. From there, and goes to the lateral vicunda. Then it innervates the posterior forearm muscles. So we have come to the end of this tutorial video. I would advise you to go through this video at least two or three times. Why is that? So that you can able to get every single information that I have posted in this video. There are lots of questions I've answered here. And don't forget to subscribe. I will be posting more videos very very soon so i thank you for your time and i wish you success in your upcoming exam stay blessed